All right, how's everybody doing? So today we're gonna do a quick guide slash setup on how Asus may have actually, well, I'm not gonna say may, they actually did. If you look at the rog.asus.com page, it says what frame rate to expect in Cyberpunk 2077 on the ROG Ally. And you can see where it says you can expect between 40 and 70 FPS. And then it shows, you know, a whole long list of settings that they changed. Now, I can do better than the numbers they did without actually having to go through all of this. But this just actually gives you a full breakdown of everything that they changed. And I'll leave the link to this article below. But I would highly advise anyone from just trying to run any out-of-the-box settings on most games, you really um, need to tune these. This isn't a, a console. This isn't a, a high-end gaming rig. You know, this is a it's a portable gaming device. It's a PC, essentially. So a lot of games just are going to need tinkering. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and set up every single one of these settings. And then we're going to make sure that we can get the numbers that they got. And we'll see how it turns out. 44. 47. 50. 48. 52. So this is actually really smooth. I don't know how well this comes across on my crappy uh, capture card. I've only got a um, just a really inexpensive capture card hooked up to my camera right here. We'll actually try to we'll actually try to run this um, on the HDMI capture here in a little bit. But I just wanted to make sure I run this at the settings they have it on with the power they have it on. So we're getting 47 to 50 FPS in this game, and I mean. That's extremely playable for Cyberpunk. It looks extremely good. I wouldn't have a single problem playing it at this resolution. Although it looks like it's stuttering a lot, but I can assure you it's not. We actually are not using the best camera and capture quality. So with the settings that Asus has on their website, I can tell you for sure, plugged in at 30 watt manual, we're getting 49.89. Max FPS um was 62 or was that 52 that no, was 52 <laughs> turbo mode all right so we showed you what it could do on manual in 30 watt with the fan curve now we're going to show you what it will do unplugged on turbo so let's wait and see so i got 43 point one six yeah 43.16 and that's unplugged on the factory turbo mode off the memory card with the settings straight from the asus website on their on their tuning guide on how they actually achieved this if you have a problem getting at least 43 fps out of your system with the settings that they have given us then you need to tune windows you need to check and see what's going on. Maybe watch your temps. Maybe check what's going on, okay? Because there's a lot of stuff that can be happening in the background on Windows. Windows is just kind of janky itself. You can have updates in the background. You can have different game launchers running in the background. There's so many different things that can be running in the background that you have no idea about. That you may have thought you completely disabled. But they still have services running in the background. Like all those active wallpaper engines... All that stuff has a service running in the background, even if it pauses it from going, like actually showing on your screen. Still got a service in the background using some CPU on standby to be able to know when you're not playing a game so it can just start draining your battery again. So I think those services are pretty dumb on a handheld. If you have a desktop, I still think it's dumb, but you know, to each his own or her own. Um, I really hope that people can just get a little bit more enjoyment out of this and stop griping about it because look, I'm running this off of a memory card unplugged on turbo mode with the settings that Asus has given us and I'm getting 43 FPS on the latest BIOS 
and the quality looks absolutely amazing. If you're running the exact settings that Asus has given you for Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p with FSR, medium, mixed settings, I can assure you that they are not lying about the numbers. In fact, they quite honestly are underestimating those numbers because I was able to achieve even higher. So we showed before we hooked up the HDMI capture card, it was exactly 43.3 and we hooked up the capture card and it's still exactly 43.3. So that wasn't putting any extra stress on the GPU um, or any less. So we're actually proving the point once again Everyone who has DM'd me, everyone who has tried to compete with the settings that I have done and they've gotten it serious enough to where they can tinker with the settings themselves just in the way that I did. They've gotten rid of all the windows bloat. They've basically done all the steps that I've done. It seems that 99% of them are all getting the exact same FPS. So most of these devices performance is going to be within one to two percent of each other no one's going to have the exact same but a one to two percent is pretty spot on if you did not get the numbers that i got please follow the link below for their setup and their settings exactly because not only was i able to get the same performance that you should expect and the same performance that they were giving us and even better you will be able to get it as well like i i know you can get these numbers you know people can get mad at asus about that you know i i don't i don't think that's right because i bought an msi laptop for example i have an msi gaming laptop and it's got a ton of just junk that came with it a bunch of crappy software and a lot of services running in the background and it needed tuning also every pc that's like a pre-built PC generally, it's gonna come with a lot of extra services and a lot of extra crap running in the background. It's not like a console where there's no variables. The hardware is the hardware and the software is the software and that's it, you just can't change it. So you have to accept it or you, or you don't. So they also have variable refresh rates. So they can lower the refresh rate. You don't notice the dip in FPS because it's such a gradual change and you don't notice the difference in the input latency because you don't have any way to measure that. You don't have anything on the screen telling you what FPS you're getting or what FPS you're not. So people who are new to the PC game, they'll get on here and open up all the utilities and have all these things running in the background, measuring their FPS, measuring their performance. Meanwhile, they don't even know a thing about PCs. They don't know how to tune Windows. Honestly, if the game looks good to you, run it. If you're having issues with it stuttering, then come holler at me and let's figure it out because that's that's what I'm about. I'm about that life. So I like getting the most out of my device. If I'm going to spend $700 on something, I'm going to make damn good and sure that it performs as good as it can. And I'll go a little bit extra to try to make sure that it does. And it is what it is. It, some people enjoy it, some people don't. If you're not the kind of person who enjoys tinkering, go buy a Steam Deck or go buy an Xbox. If you don't think you should have to tinker with something, go buy a console. I'm not trying to crap on console players or anything like that because consoles have exclusive deals and exclusive games. And you know, you're built into that one ecosystem and you have to accept it or you don't. But with a PC, it opens up a lot more doors. You can get games that you can't get on console. You can get old games, you can get new games. You can build your own games. I mean, you can you can do so much with this thing. So I love this device. I really hope you do too. This has been the coolest thing. This has been something that got me excited again about PC gaming. This is a humbling experience because I'm one who can normally just eat every game at high ultimate settings and not have any problems. But like, this has been fun squeezing sometimes double the fps that some of these people are getting and it's also been humbling showing people how to get into benchmarking properly and how to eliminate the variables and how to actually make sure that you're giving clear and accurate results you know i'm inspired by people like gamers nexus and if you've ever watched his videos you'll immediately know that like 
they run their benchmarks the exact same way every time they try to make sure that the drivers are the same they'll test between different drivers oh stay tuned to gamers nexus he did buy a rog ally so he is going to be testing that um there's just a lot of nuances to benchmarking games and to accurately making sure that you're getting the right result just like checking to see how much memory you're using in the background how much vram you're using so like right here 27 percent oh a uh, bonus tip i should have had this running but a lot of people have asked me about it i always try to throw a bonus tip in there at the end for the ogs preferences in-game overlay performance show metrics overlay boom you're welcome now this um will tell you how much power you're using off the gpu it'll tell you how much vram you're using how much memory you're using cpu i'll tell you the temps and all that good stuff so i like to be on manual that way i can have my fan curve and all that good stuff and other than that you know i know i ramble a lot so i appreciate the ogs who kind of like stick around and check this kind of stuff out so if this was helpful to you a please let some people know share the link out tell them how i got you this number tell them that their fps is dog water and their game is dog water and their skills are dog water tell them whatever you want to tell them i really really just can't stress this enough that like there's too much hate behind this device from a couple different areas there's there's steam deck people who who just love their steam deck and I mean, this is coming from a guy who had a Steam Deck modded and everything done like you could do to it. So like I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. But uh, you can't play Modern Warfare with it unless you put Windows on it. And then if you put Windows on it, you got the same issues and yada, yada, yada. It's just an endless cycle. So Windows is kind of crap. So anyways, I'm going to go. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>